The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to solve the problem of testing the difference between two correlations that have a common dependent variable. So I've demonstrated how to do that in the textbook with the example relevant to intelligence as a predictor of GPA and self-discipline as a predictor or correlate of GPA. So in this case here, it's another opportunity to practice this. And the research case, it, the, the scenario was the uh, researchers wanted to look at the association between hemispheric brain activity during a fear response where they had a hypothesis that it might not be equal. So the null hypothesis is that the left amygdala correlates with the fear response equally to the amygdala from the right hemisphere. So you may recall from the textbook that there are actually three correlations relevant to the estimation of a test of the difference between two correlations. So we need the correlation between amygdala and fear response in the left hemisphere, and we need this correlation between right hemisphere and fear response, and then we need these two cor the correlation between the two independent variables. So I'm going to get these correlations. Going to click on correlate by variant and fear response to the bottom, and I'm going to click OK. So I've got these three variables, and we can see that. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Not really necessary, but I just want to make it all on one row. So there we go. Now we have the correlation between fear response and left hemisphere is 0 0.590, and that's just barely significant. P equal 0 0.043. It's just barely less than 0 0.05. And we have here another correlation between the right hemisphere and the fear response, and the correlation in this case is 0.14, and the p value is 0 0.664. And all too often, what you'll see is that people will write a paper and sh say that the left hemisphere is a statistically significantly is a statistically significant predictor of fear response, and amygdala is not. Therefore, the correlation is larger for the left hemisphere than the right, and that is not strictly speaking appropriate. It's not appropriate from a statistical standpoint because the difference, the numerical difference observed here may have occurred just by chance. So you need to test the difference between two correlations, just like you would test the correlation for significance itself. So the final correlation we have here is the correlation between amygdala left and right, and they're positively correlated, and it's irrelevant that it's not a significant correlation. We need that correlation to input into the formula relevant to the test of the difference between two correlations. And I'm going to use my trusted syntax file that was based on research by Ming, Rosenthal, and Rubin, a 1992 publication. And I've used this already in the foundation section of the textbook, and I'm just going to use it again. So I need the correlation R12. So I'm going to create a new data file because I need to input the correlations into that. So new data, and I need to specify my columns R. 1, 2, and then the next one in the syntax file is R13 and R23. So R13 and R23, and then I need sample size, N. So now I need to populate these four cells with the relevant information. And I've got that over here. So easiest one is sample size, that's 12. So I'm going to put that here. And I also need the correlation 1, 3, is that the first one? It says, yes, 1, 3. It doesn't matter whether you use the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere. It's, it's basically arbitrary uh, what, what you specify here, uh, 1, 3 versus 2, 3. I'm going to go with the left hemisphere first, so 0.59. I would probably go to three decimal places, to be honest, 0.590. 0 0.590, and let's just push that out to three decimal places. And the correlation between, whoops, I made a mistake there. I actually, this is 0 0.50. The correlation 1, 2 should be 0 0.50. Made a mistake there. And then the independent variable and the dependent variable in the first instance, 0.59. And then R23 is 
0.14. And it looks like it's going to be statistically significant because it's such a big difference between the left hemisphere and fear and the right hemisphere and fear. But the sample size is really small here. So I'm not, I, I, to be honest, I don't know what the result's going to be here. Uh, let's see what the syntax produces. So we just have to run it now that we've inputted that. And SPSS will report the result in the output file. And we can see here that the difference amounts to a numerical difference of 0 0.50. And the lower and upper bound correspond to negative 0.16. And the upper bound corresponds to 0.845. So it's a massive 95% confidence intervals associated with the numerical difference of 0.45. Again, I'm not surprised the sample size of only 12 does not give us much opportunity for a narrow confidence range. The Z statistic associated with this analysis is less than 1.96, and therefore it's not significant, as I would expect from the confidence intervals. It's equal to 1.497. And based on two-tailed hypothesis, it's a, a two-tailed approach. It's equal to a P of 0.5. 134. Because this p-value is not less than 0 0.05, I cannot reject the null hypothesis that these two correlations, left hemisphere with fear and right hemisphere with fear, are statistically significantly different from each other. I can't actually make that conclusion in this case. But as I mentioned, many people in many scientific papers that you read, they will just say, oh, well, one's significant and the other one's non-significant. Therefore, this is statistically significantly correlated and significantly bigger than this correlation, and you cannot say that. You must test the difference statistically with a, an appropriate analysis itself.